In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering a real world Python data analytics project where we'll take some sample data uh, using Seaborn sample data so anyone can follow along. And within our code notebook, we'll use a lot of good functions like uh, dropping pandas data, we'll look at lambda functions, we'll look at creating columns, percentage columns, and then visualizing everything within a regression or scatter plot. So a lot of good concepts to cover, and I'm not going to take too much time to do it. The great thing is I'm using Google Colab, which is an online Python notebook. You can go colab.research.google.com and you can follow along exactly the same content as myself. And as we're using sample data, you'll also be able to replicate the data set and you can use the exact same code to the T if you like. So the first thing that we need to do is actually import our dependencies. And you may need to pip install if you haven't previously installed these packages. Uh, you can do that locally in Google Colab or within your terminal or however you like, or the CMD, potentially the command prompt in Windows. So these dependencies are actually the gold standard libraries for data analysis, essentially. We'll use pandas and numpy for transformations, and we'll use matplotlib for visualizing data. Seaborn will visualize data, but as you can see here, we can actually use Seaborn, which is a great statistical data science library in Python, uh, to load in data sets. So we're actually just going to arbitrarily name df as our data frame. That will be our base data set. And we'll set that equal to Seaborn's load data set, which is tips, which is dining data. Uh, and we'll, we'll just look at this in a second and actually visualize or display how this looks on the screen. As we're doing here, the first thing that we really should do is just view the data. Now, if we take our data frame and we just apply dot head with standard parenthesis with no arguments involved, that will print out the first five rows of the data. So we can actually see what we're working with. You could specify more, you could specify less. Sometimes I'll just do head three uh, because at this stage, we're just at actually seeing what the data contains. We've got a total bill, column, tip, sex. We've got smoker, day, time, and size. And we can already see for what we're going to do, we're essentially going to have a grouping to view the average percentage by day, a tip percentage that is. We're going to apply another column for tip percentage. Uh, we're going to visualize the sort of um, linear nature between the total bill and tip and how they relate. So we can already picture that we're likely not going to need some columns and they would likely be the, the sex of the person who's dining, um, smoker and size. So another quick check that we can do is we can use the is null and sum function together just to quickly check for null values. Uh, it's something a standard, do a standard, you can also check for NAN values in Python and um, just to check that the, the data is relatively clean and reliable. Now, like I said, in, the, in a more Pythonic way, if we want to drop columns, we can actually, if we're dealing with multiple, we can pass a list rather than just sort of standard listing out a bunch of columns within our data frame drop function. So as I said, there's three columns that we don't want. We can pass us in to df drop just to drop or get rid, essentially delete those columns, specify in place true, just to maintain our same naming convention or same data frame it means we don't have to reassign it and set it to the axis one. Um, and that will equate to the columns we're dropping. And then again, I'm just showing how this looks now without the, to show that it's it's worked. We don't have the dropped columns anymore. And I've just specified the first three rows within data frame head. Now in this step, what I want to do is I actually want to go ahead and generate a tip percentage column. So I'm doing a few things. I'm supplying the name of the new data frame column I want as tip per underscore percentage. And I'm setting that equal to df.apply. That's a way to add or append a new column on. I'm using Lambda, which is just an anonymous function uh, that takes away the need to use def keywords and things. And I'm just saying I want to take the tip row and I want to divide that by the total bill row, the data that we have over each row, multiply that by 100. And that's a standard way to get the percentage. And then I just want to round it to two values. So I get that tip percentage for every row. Of course, I'm just showing the top three values, but I could be showing more. Um, this is just an example um, to show you uh, while sort of preserving screen size. Now what I want to do, and this is interesting, we can take 
the numpy where and within that we can almost nest in string functions so within pandas we're going to actually replace strings so you'll see we have two columns and we have a total bill column and tip percentage but they have underscores now let's say i just want to replace these with white space well using where we can sort of use conditional logic so sort of equivalent to if statements so first of all we can get contains to find those column names that have the underscore and then we can use string replace to essentially take that underscore and replace it with white space and reassign it back to data frame columns now when we show the data frame again we get the exact same data frame essentially but we've changed the column names uh, total bill and tip percentage so that they no longer rely on an underscore uh, and they just rely on um, a bit of white space. The only real complexity in this is that you're almost nesting the the um, string replace within the numpy where clause uh, but you can follow along with this exact sample data and get a feel for it. So the only other thing that we might want to do here essentially um, is actually use group by so you'll be familiar with grouping and aggregating if you work with sql well we can actually do the same thing within pandas and what we want to say is we want to sort of roll this up and aggregate it by the tip percentage by day now of course to do that we'll need an aggregation so there's a few elements here we're actually creating a new data frame on top of the old one here just just because we can and we're saying daily tip percentage is equal to the data frame we need to pass the group by function and we take the day as you know how we want to roll this up and then we'll need an aggregate so we take the tip percentage and then within there we're actually taking the mean or the average and we're rounding that to two decimal places and that will return a rolled up view with just the days that we have diners in thursday friday saturday sunday and the average tip percentage so that's another obviously really powerful thing to do in pandas and it's directly equivalent to a sql function that you will uh, most likely use a lot of the time for analysis also equivalent to things in power bi um, and tableau like using sums counts count distincts averages and so on so now we can actually go ahead and visualize this pretty simply with just a few lines of code. So we're going to do something called a regression plot. We're going to set the style on Seaborn to dark grid, just gives us a darker background grid essentially. And then we're taking uh, a reg plot. Essentially, this is just a scatter plot, but we've added a regression line, which is just a line of best fit to show how uh, the two the two variables, the so total bill, as we can see up here in the data frame, and tip relate to each other. So, you know, we'll, we'll get to see if, if that increases in a linear fashion. Um, we take the data set, which is just data frame. It's not the last one that we did, the rolled up. It's the one before. Um, and the other elements essentially just relate to that regression line and the color of the data points which is dark blue we specify a title with plt.title matplotlib function the x label total bill i'll capitalize that and i'll capitalize the y label but as standard the y label will be displayed vertically not great practice so we just use the set rotation to display that horizontally and we can show the plot and it's, it's very simple in nature, but it's really helpful in a notebook to view how this increases. We can see in this line of best fit, essentially, uh, it starts off at around about a 15% tip per total bill. But we can see as the uh, value of the bill increases, the tip sort of doesn't maintain always at that level. It sort of tends to decrease as well, I guess, just because the sum of money becomes greater. So that sort of puts people off. And that's how simple it is to actually go ahead within pandas use some of our supporting libraries like numpy seaborn and matplotlib a lot of the gold standard data analysis libraries and really change data frames modify them add columns make our own anonymous functions and then visualize it. and it's very simple to visualize the data we can use other libraries like boca for things like good tool tips but it's really simple and I implore you to go ahead and try this. And if you like the content, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe and share. Thank you.